We fish for the fish that eat the fish you fish for, and you should too. Quit jacking around and get you some hog dogs today. All right, welcome to the Mud Bum USA Lifestyle Podcast. I am your co-host, Blake Show, and I want to welcome you guys to the show. Um, along with me is Mitch Fink. I have known Mitch um, before LJ was spin, spin, and mud on the streets of New Albany. So we appreciate you guys joining us. Like I said, we're going to talk about everything outdoors here on the Mud Bum Podcast. And really, I just want to give an introduction to ourselves and, you know, why we love the brand and see where it goes. So, Mitch, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be part of the podcast. Uh, as Blake had mentioned, I'm an avid outdoors guy. I'm a northeastern boy, uh, northeastern Iowa, and uh, love the outdoors, love fishing, um, especially when I, I got a hold of the, the bank poles. Been doing that for a few years now. Uh, love whitetail hunting. I'm a huge waterfowl guy. Well, at least I try to be anyway. And uh, yeah, so we're just uh, we're pumped to kind of kick this thing off. We're going to talk about a lot of uh, a lot of cool topics. It's not just about catfishing; it's about everything from hunting, fishing, good recipes, uh, a new beer that maybe we came across. Uh, there's going to be a lot involved in this, I believe. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I've known Mitch for years since we were little kids. Now we both have uh, families, kids of our own, and I think I know I am excited. And I think you guys follow kind of along the same family core values of you know raising our kids outdoors and keeping them involved in, in our pastimes because it's really a great place to be um again my name is blake show and i bought Mudbum in december of 2020 and we're excited to finally get it relaunched here i know we've got a great following behind the brand and let's see where things go so um you know, Mitch, we're, we're in the dead of winter right now. Have you been out ice fishing at all? I have. Uh, I was fortunate enough, even with having three boys at home, I got time to get out there. I've taken them out fishing. Uh, the fishing's been awesome, man. It yeah. really has been. Um, it's hit or miss. You know, either you go out there and you just hammer them or uh, you spend a lot of time drilling holes. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. To be completely honest, I have never ice fished. I've lived on the Mississippi my entire life, and I have never ice fished once. It's funny because my kids, you know, they love fishing during the summer, but uh, we drive, you know, up the road going to lacrosse or whatever, and the kids are like, Dad, let's go ice fishing. And I'm like, okay, well, we should get some ice fishing and stuff. And they're like, Dad, all you need is a bucket and a hammer and a fishing pole, and you just chop a hole in the ice and go fish. I'm like, well, I guess you guys already got me there. So, so yeah, you tell me a little bit, like, what water depths are you, are you fishing for? You know, mainly you're probably fishing for panfish, bluegills, yeah. crappie, things like that. So I got to I gotta start by saying, you know, the first time I took my kids out. And, we'll, and I'll tell you a little bit about where we fish and kind of what we've been catching. So the first time I took my boys out, my oldest was like four or five. And we were drilling 10-inch holes. We were, we were using tip-ups. We, uh, we were fishing locally right in Lansing here. And uh, so we drilled the holes for the tip-ups, and obviously we move our tip-ups around. If we don't get a flag, you know, right away or, or after a half hour, we move them around. So I was moving them around, and I look over, and my oldest has got his leg stuck down the 10-inch <laughs> hole. So pulls his foot out, the boot goes with it, you know. So I look down there, and his boot's at the bottom of four and a half feet of water. So, so there's another older gentleman sitting there, and he's like, He's, he's laughing. I could tell he was chuckling, sitting on his bucket. So I'm like, oh, my God. So he brings over this giant lure and snags his boot and lifts the boot back up through the hole. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a great start to our uh, ice fishing adventures with my kids. And uh, so then my other son, who was like three at that time, two and a half or three, he's with us. So I'm fishing. We're starting to catch some fish, you know, and having a good time. He's My other son's got a cold boot, obviously. But uh, I look over, and I've got a bag full of my my uh my poles i look over and i see one pole going down the hole so he's just grabbing fishing poles and he's throwing poles down the hole so i'm like oh my god i run over there and i'm like what the hell is going on man so i look down there and there's two other poles down there so as i was fishing he's just grabbing poles and he's whipping them down the hole and this this old dude just sitting back laughing like this is entertaining you know so let's just say, you know, the start of getting my kids ice fishing didn't go as planned. We caught fish, but, you know, lost a couple poles, lost a boot down a 10-inch 10, 10 hole. But, uh, you know, the kids have gotten older now. They love uh, they love ice fishing. Heck, we've been fishing uh, just right on Pool 9 up in Lansing, Iowa. Um, it's crazy we've caught most of our fish in a foot of water this year. So I heard that. Another guy I was talking to uh, 
Tuesday or Wednesday this week, he said he got into the crappies. And he's like, I swear, you know, the, I, we got really good ice yet. He said, I swear these fish were swimming on their sides <laughs> to bite the lures because we were in like five, six inches of water where they were biting and he was yeah. just killing them. Well, and, and, and actually I talked to my, my cousin, same thing. Uh, they were fishing a foot of water. Uh, they caught, well, a good friend of mine caught 31 crappies in about two to two feet to a foot of water. And then, like you said, you know, most guys are going out, they're drilling a hole and, you know, pushing their auger down to clear their hole and they're hitting dirt going, whoa, wait a second, <laughs> bad spot to fish. Well, yeah. it's the, it's the spot to fish. This year, these fish have been, have been super shallow, biting on orange, orange jigs. Um, we did a ton of tip downs. We, we hammered them on tip downs. Yeah. That one day we caught 38, 38 perch. Biggest one was 15 inches. Uh, just, just a huge football, but all in a foot and a half of water, man. See, I noticed that this summer though, when I was fishing for bait, for bank poles, mm -hmm. that they weren't in the deep snags. Like when I was catching bluegills and rock bass, I was catching them at the bank almost yep. uh, under the root of the tree. So if, I don't know if something changed ecosystem wise on the river or what. You know, I thought about this. I gave this a lot of thought. You know, I talked to, uh, I love talking to a lot of the old boys, you know, around the fishing holes and uh, at the local bait shops, you know, that's where they hang out. And, and when the water's low, you get a lot of vegetation. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing, I'm assuming that it has to do something with that vegetation, with the low water, maybe yeah. the vegetation growing in that, that foot of water. But we did the same thing. I got a couple other buddies, um, hammered perch, even in the spring, in the fall, a lot of shallows. Uh, we, two years ago, we smoked crappies in, in timber, on timber all year long. And it was, it was awesome. It's probably one of the best years I've ever had. This year I fished those same exact, this last summer, fished all those same timber holes. Um, couldn't catch a crappie to save my life. Really? Got into some of these shallows where there was some weed beds and stuff. That's where all those crappies were. That's where all those perch were. So you're probably onto something with it being, you know, something to do with the ecosystem, maybe the vegetation because of the shallow water. So yeah. Yeah, we definitely fun. have had low, lower than normal water. I think, I think it's typical pool level lately. You know, when, when we're talking what the river level should be, but what we've been accustomed to the last five or 10 years, you know, the water last year was pretty low. Absolutely. Um, and I don't know what's your take. The other thing that I was thinking is it seems like with COVID and everything else, I feel like the fishing pressure has increased over the past two years. Exponentially. Do you think that's pushing fish out of, you know, I think a shore sloop always piled with guys ice fishing mm -hmm. and the same thing in the summer and things like that. Do you think some of these holes push the pressure pushes the fish out of there and they're finding new places? I think, I think so. Um, I've been a fisherman. <clears throat> I've been a fisherman for since as far back as I can remember. I mean, I'm, I'm a full fledged river rat is what the city folk call us. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time on the water and, uh, I can remember back when I was, you know, nine, 10 years old, you didn't see the number of fishermen, which don't get me wrong, guys. We, we love seeing people yeah. fish. We love it. But I do think your, your normal fishing spots, your go-tos to take your kids, you pull in there and there's 17 boats and you got, you know, two poles per boat, you know, I think, yeah, you're going to push, I think some of the fish out. Um, I think you got to get creative. You got to kind of work for your fish. You got to get in some of these backwaters that people aren't in and, and uh, really, you know, kind of try harder for these fish. But I, I agree though, there is a little more pressure I think it does kind of move them fish out. Yeah, and by all means, that comment was not was not intended to come across that, as there's too many fishermen out mm -hmm. there because I think we as outdoorsmen are one of the biggest proponents to conservation and, and keeping the sport what it is today, right? You know, whether it, it's supporting different or new legislation, things like that, or fighting new legislation, we are the ones that have to be that voice because – no matter what we are, the conservation is out there. I, I truly believe that. Um, it may, was really coming from a place, is the, does fish, fishing pressure affect schools of fish and things like that and sure. push them out of their habitat? So I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, fishing has been good, though, I will say. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we're used to high water, right? We are. Like, the waters have ranged from 10 foot all the way up to, to 14 foot, you know, which is real high. Um and, you know, we've, it, it obviously high water allows more places to fish, but even low water, we caught fish. We just had to work, work for them. Yeah. yeah. Work a little harder, which is, is okay. Yeah. You know, it seems like the same thing having duck season too. 
Oh yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> we talked a little bit about that this morning. Yeah, I mean the, the birds move through, but it's like you got you had to work like all season long to get a week or a week and a half that we actually got into the birds. Yeah, it was a it was kind of a it was a tougher season. We found them. The thing about them was when you found them, you found them. Yeah, you were really on them. Um, we hunted uh, a lot of willow blinds, you know, because the water was shallow. It's hard to kind of get your boat up against the shore. Uh, a lot of times we hunted from shore, built, built our own little homemade blinds on the shore through our spread out, you know, and, uh, you know, had, had a good year, shot, shot some really, really good ducks, but then there was stretches where we would, you know, hunt for a week straight and, and boy, we, you know, wouldn't see a duck in the sky. So yeah, I just saw, I was watching a video on Facebook yesterday and a guy had cut open a flathead, cut open his stomach, had, had a full bluebill in there. Really? I don't know if anybody else seen that, but yeah, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> this thing was like that, that was it was probably a 25 pound catfish. That so. is awesome. Yeah, I know uh, we were bass fishing. Uh, speaking of fish and doing that kind of stuff, we were, my son and I were bass fishing uh, just south uh, of the power plant in Lansing there. And uh, so we were going along, and there's I seen a duck that had some baby ducks. And, and I don't know what fish took one of them out, but my son's like, Dad, look at all those ducks, you know, kind of going through. And, and they're going right around the lily pads, and all of a sudden, seen this giant fish come up, nice. pop the water, and it was one less duck after that <laughs> so it was pretty amazing and it, it's just it's crazy the things that you know we've spent a lot of time on the mississippi the things that you you get to see out there is is absolutely amazing and, that, and that's why i am the river rat that i am yeah it, it's such a great place to be i mean you can, it's almost i like to and even telling people about vacations in the area and things like that our area has everything a person needs mm -hmm. and it's a way to get away from the distractions Right. I mean, we're, we're lucky enough. You get into a lot of rural, rural areas and you tend to lose cell service and things like that. And I don't think that's the case in most of our area, which is nice in case you have issues and things like that. Yep. But if there's so much to offer that it's easy to get away from the distractions and forget that those are even there. And that's what I love about our area. It, it really is. I mean, we've got the ice fishing. We've got pristine deer hunting. We've got duck hunting. We've got just the normal summer fishing and the camping. The camping is absolutely unreal. If you haven't seen a sunrise on the Mississippi in the summer, you really are missing out. I mean, I live for those moments, those sunsets, those sunrises. Um, and that's why I love I love these bank holes that we do, man. I mean, there's nothing better than, than loading your kids in, getting some bait, going out there, setting those bank holes, which what I love about setting the bank holes is it keeps the kids active. Always active. Because I don't know about our viewers, but I will say this. If you're like my family, if I'm sitting in a boat in a snag and we ain't catching fish, <laughs> my kids are not the most patient children on the planet. So we've actually kind of changed our, we've changed what we do. We do the bank fulls now because yeah. you load the, you load the bait. I'll go out and catch the bait, load the bait, grab the poles. You fly into a nice area, get a good setup, pound the pole in, hook your bait up. And boom, you're on to the next. As long as you're moving, yeah. guess what? Those kids are, are you know, they're happy. They're yeah. enjoying the boat rides. And the cool part is we wake up the next morning and they cannot, it's like, it's like Christmas day, man. They, they wake up and they want to go check the bank poles. They want to see if there's a fish on that bank pole. And that's why we love it. It keeps the kids active. It's yeah. super simple. Pull up, you see that pole bang in the water and it's on. Yeah. And the other thing we, we've started doing, it, we've done it since I was little, is trout lining. And yeah, we love right. setting trout lines. It's the same thing, yeah. right? I mean, you bait them up because you're not always catching bait fish for bank poles and things like that. So, you know, you can grab some night crawlers or catfish yeah. bait and things like that and go trout line. Sure. And it's the same thing, right? I mean, again, you're not usually catching 15 to 25, 30 pound fish, but you're catching a ton of great eaters, you know, yeah. those channel cats and fiddler sizes and things yeah. like that. So we love setting trout lines. Yeah. And, you know, those trout lines is something I just got into. And what what's cool about trot lines that I have found is you can build your own trot lines super cheap or you can purchase trot lines through wherever, um, you know, so really um, the trot line thing, something I'm figuring out, can't wait to, you know, ride with you and kind yeah. of see what, what you do. Uh, but definitely we are eating up the bank poles, man. And uh, you know, this warm weather starts getting us excited because we know that ice is going to get out and then we know those, uh, those big flatheads are going to get hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we went from 40 degrees that started to melt all the snow this week back down to eight. Everything's just <laughs> solid ice now. Yeah. I'm surprised that there's not even holes in the channel open up right now. 
I'll tell you, I went out last week and I've been ice fishing my whole life. And, you know, we talked about, you know, how there's a lot of fishermen out there fishing a lot of the holes. So I kind of, I wanted to venture out and kind of do uh, explore some new territory. So I grab my spud bar, of course, and uh, get out on the snowmobile and I start hitting some of these sloughs. And I got to a slough where I, as, as many years as I can remember, was open water. And I'm seeing tracks across there like snowmobile tracks, like people walking across there. And I'm like, man, there's got to be ice there. So I took my spud bar every three foot. I'm, I'm hitting a hole. So finally I grabbed my auger in the main channels of where I have always seen ice or uh, open water. Uh, I drilled a hole. There's 13 inches of ice on some of these high current areas, which is great because it allowed us to get off the beaten path of where everyone else was fishing. And then we found some spots where we were catching walleye. We were catching northern. We were catching perch and, you know, you know, some deeper water there, but then there was other sluice that had shallow water. But yeah, there's ice out there, man. It's going to take a little while for this to, to kind of subside and melt away, but you know, we need that warm weather. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully we don't get, you know, a huge rain pounding, push the ice out quick. Like it did. It seems like that's when we start having issues on the river, but yeah. Um, so since we are a catfishing company mainly, what have you ever caught catfish through the ice? You know, one. Yeah. I have, I have, but I started to look into this. There are people that do. Yeah. I don't know if you recently saw that on, the, on Facebook, there was a guy not too long ago caught a, caught a big flathead through the ice. Yeah. Yeah. So it is possible. The one without snow on the outside of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Saw, saw that guy, yeah. yeah. And I think that's, they've got to eat. You know what I'm saying? They've got to eat. It'd be cool to figure out how to do that. I got a lot of guys that, that fish at the dams that mm -hmm. have, they have caught sure. catfish through the ice at the dams. I think they hang out a lot at the dams, but, uh, yeah, mainly, you know, we're like the walleye guys, the crappies, the bluegills, but it, I think it'd be pretty cool to learn how to do that. Yeah, definitely. So you were talking this summer, maybe this fall, you've been doing something interesting, catfishing, rod and reel, right? Absolutely. Um, I have really dove headfirst into rod and reel catfishing. I got a good buddy of mine out of Brownsville, uh, really has it pegged. He really knows how to do it. And uh, it's really interesting how we do it. You want me to tell them yeah, how, yeah. how we do it? Cool. Yeah, for sure. So um, how we've been doing it is we fish flatheads in deep snags with rod and reel, kind of how you would fish bass if you were flipping jigs. And I know that sounds crazy. Like how do you fish a catfish flipping? So what we're doing is we take like a three ounce no roll sinker. And then obviously we've got some pretty heavy braid, uh, cat king line and so forth, whatever your favorite brand is put a 10 out hook on it and we're using live bait, but we turn it to cut bait. So you can flip live bait down into these snags. You can do that. We've seen it more effective to cut live bait, hook it on there and flip it right away. And we will fish every upside section of these snags in five foot increments. When that weather gets real hot, those fish don't like to move. Mm -hmm. So we take these bank, you know, rod and reel, heavy weight and we flip it upstream into these snags and the cool part about it is you stay active because those fish if they're there you're putting that bait right on them right, right. they're going to hit it right away sure. if they're not in that snag you're moving to the next snag and i'm telling you we've started to hammer big catfish doing that just nice. cut bait bluegills use the head of the bluegill hook it on there flip it into those snags and God knows Mississippi's got snags to fish, right? So are you jigging off the bottom too when you're flipping them in there or just let them sit as you would if you were anchored up, just let it float into the snag? So we're actually trying to get it down beneath the snag on the bottom because mm -hmm. that's where those fish, we, we feel those fish are at. They like that colder water. They move you know out of that colder water at night. That's where the bank poles come in. But flipping that no roll three ounce weight with a 10 knot hook, down into those snags and, and let it kind of drift under there and i'll kind of pull it and pop it you know and we actually use an orange float on there so it gives it a little bit of visual mm -hmm. so that will kind of lift that bait up a little bit but uh we've had awesome luck i mean we uh last tournament we fished we got second place we lost the winning fish right next to the boat no, uh, i was fishing with my mom and she's a she's a professional angler let me tell you <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, it, give it a try. We, we've, we've been doing awesome doing that, you yeah. know, and it's something to pass the time in that, in them hot summer months. If you love catching flatheads like we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We just kind of got into more of the rod and reel fishing ourselves too. Yeah. Um, this past couple summers and 
Yeah, it gives you something to do during the day too, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And people okay. think, you know, catfishing, you got to be out in the middle of the night or all night long. And we've had great luck, you know, late afternoons and that prior to getting ready to go set, set the lines out or set the poles out. Yeah. You know, sit, sitting over wing dams and things like that. And we're lucky enough on Mississippi that we've got so many wing dams. Yeah, the, those wing dams, that brings up a good point. Um, we've been fishing the back sides of deep wing dams mm. the same way. So with if you're if you want to try that rod and reel, like for example, if you're camping during the day and the kids want to go out and do some fishing, grab the rod and reel and get some bait. And then we flipped into the into the into lower sides of wing dams and we've we've hooked in some really big catfish. We've caught big flatheads guys at noon. Yeah. And and that's like unheard of. Most cat fishermen, you'll go up there and say, Yeah, we landed this flathead at noon. And they're like, wow, you know, that, that's crazy. We night fish these with bank pole or with, uh, you know, rod and reel. Mm-hmm. That's not the case. If you can find that cold, deep water and put that bait right in their face, yeah. I mean, fish on. I mean, we've, we've done it. Have you caught, when you were fishing the wing dams, were you catching a lot of flatheads or mainly channel cats? We were catching um, a, a mixture of both. Yeah. We were catching some giant channels. Yeah. We really were. Yeah. Um, the flatheads that we were hooking into were good fish. Um, but yeah, we were, it was really a kind of a 50, 50. We even caught some blue cats last year. Really? So yeah, on the backside of some wing dams, uh, we did catch some blue cats flipping into, uh, you know, some brush along the main channel where mm-hmm. there's current real deep water. We're talking 20, 30 foot of water where the water's cold. Yeah. yeah I've, so, I've never caught a blue cat up on the Mississippi up here. Yep. I caught two of them last year. Really? Yeah. It was fantastic. Big it was one? awesome. Yeah. One was 13 pounds. Nice. Yeah. One on a bank pole, one on a, uh, one on a rod and reel. Me. Like main channel areas or, or was it back in the backwaters? So on the main channel. What's so, that? and it was in the same spot, which was crazy. Uh, Cause there's a wing dam that kind of comes out and there's uh, where the bank is kind of eroded away where the water was eddying. Mm-hmm. So we had the bank pole there and then we were fishing the snag and the wing dam. And that's where I ended up catching two blues. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a treat to pull that one up. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we talked about in the intro about you know part of what we both love is cooking our game and cleaning game things like that when you're out fishing we're big proponents as well of cpr you know catch pitch and release where do you draw the line personally on what you keep when you're out and what you leave back and put back into the ecosystem you know that that's a good question i mean that that's a topic that everybody talks about when you get on the water you know yeah. do, do you keep a limit every single time you and, go and out people ridicule you too for what you're always going to have those people but at the end of the day I know we, we do it just, you know, for, for the fun and to put meat in the freezer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you said, you sometimes, you know, a lot of, a lot of people get ridiculed for catch, keeping a limit every single time. Me personally, I love eating fish. I've got 20 different recipes that, that I use. Um, but it really comes down to when I open that freezer, what I've got there. Mm-hmm. You know, if I've got bluegills and crappies that are sitting there or catfish flatheads, you know, from, from last year, I'm using it up. If I go out there and I have a good catch, I'm probably going to release a lot, you know, because I've got fish there to eat. And like you said, you know, there's nothing worse than having freezer burnt fish. So we got to eat up what we've got in in the freezer. And uh, we both have children. We obviously know how important it is to have a lot of fish around for many years to come. So it really comes down to what I've got in the freezer. Um, And uh, yeah, kind of kind of leads from there. Yeah, personally, you know, I love eating them eight to ten pound flatheads with the belly meat on those. I mean, you can get so much meat out of one fish. So I kind of draw the line myself in that eight to ten pound. You get up to 12, 15 pounds or bigger. You know, to me, those are almost trophy sized fish that yeah, you get pictures of them, you show your friends, Absolutely. and you get them back in the water. But um, it definitely, I know when I'm going out probably what I'm keeping, what I'm putting back based on what's in the freezer and what I got time for, you know, I'm not going to let fish go to waste in the live well that I know I can't clean that night. Yeah. You know, in that eight to 10 pound range is, is, is really the size I kind of target for the simple fact that if you haven't, for our viewers, if you haven't caught a big flathead and filleted it out, there's a lot of meat oh, on an eight to so 10 pound fish. We're not talking just one meal. We're talking multiple meals. Mm. And especially that, that belly meat, you know, and if, if for everybody out there, if you haven't had flathead belly meat, that's the filet mignon of the Mississippi. I mean, that is just, yeah. there's something about that. It's a different texture. It's pure white. It is delicious. There's so many people out there that, that give you flack, like, oh, I can't believe you. you're eating them catfish and bottom feeders, things like that. And I, I tell everybody that has that rebuttal, like, let me cook you fish my way. And I guarantee you probably can't tell the difference between a walleye 
in a catfish fillet. Absolutely. Or what you can do is just cook that fish, not tell them what it is. <laughs> let them eat a plate of it and then let them get the second hey, plate hey. and go, hey, you know what that was? That's catfish. That's flathead. Now, now that you're filling up on a catfish, here's some wall. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but but I, I, you know, wrapping this up, I, I think we had a great first podcast. I'm super excited where the brand is going and what we've got rolling out this summer. Um, not only in the brand and products, but for the content and the media that we're going to put out as well. We're going to have a lot of things um, this summer of educational content, you know, where, how we catch our bait fish, where we go to, what we look for in snags and how to, where we set the bank poles, getting into the trot line. I, I love trot line and you're getting into it, you know, so, so much educational stuff. And, you know, one thing that's personal to me is we are going to be real with this content, right? We, we don't get sponsors. Anything like that. I don't intend you ever have sponsors on, on the show and on the media because, Grant, I don't got a lot of money, right? And even though that, like, we are real, we are what we can afford, and you don't have to have a bunch of money to go buy the newest stuff. Like, we've got some great products. I hope people use them. But at the end of the day, like, this is a simple way to fish. It really is. And like you said, you know, this, this is an affordable, awesome way to fish. And it's not just for... You know, just yourself. I mean, I, I take my kids out every single time I go out using these these hog logs, you know, yeah. and it's simple, it's easy. You can get a ton of fish doing it, like like you said, you know, just going out there, setting these poles up, and we're going to teach you guys how to do it all from start to finish. Basically, how to set the pole, how to clean the fish, how to prepare the fish, everything from start to finish so that you can enjoy the summer in a different way. Yeah. So, guys, follow us on Facebook at, at The Mud Bums. Follow us on YouTube at The Mud Bum Media Machine. And um, watch for more of these podcasts. And I can't wait to uh, see where this goes this summer. Yeah. Right. See you on the river. See you. Thanks, Mitch. We fish for the fish that eat the fish you fish for. And you should too. Quit jacking around and get you some hog dogs today.